Hi everyone, welcome to MD VOD, your health live and on demand here on EmpowerMe.tv. I'm Dr. John Kennedy and today we're talking about obesity. Obesity is literally the biggest problem in America because according to new government reports, one in three adults and one in six kids are obese. And we know those with obesity are more likely to develop type two diabetes, heart disease and stroke, high blood pressure, certain cancers, high cholesterol, liver and gallbladder disease, sleep apnea, arthritis, and gynecological problems. And the estimated costs related to obesity are about $147 billion a year. So it's important to know that obesity isn't just about what your body looks like, it's also related to a number of life-threatening health conditions. To help us better understand the magnitude of this problem, we're joined by two obesity experts, weight loss surgeon, Dr. Jeremy Corman, and obesity diet expert, Dr. Amy Lee. And as we do with every illness, we'll look at who's at risk, the common symptoms, how to make a diagnosis, and treatments and therapies available. And finally, we'll take a look at whether insurance covers costs. And it's always helpful when trying to understand any disease to take a look at the anatomy involved. When we come back, we'll take a look. Hi everyone, welcome back to MDVOD. In order to have a thorough understanding of obesity, it helps to know the anatomy. The way we measure obesity is with the body mass index, or BMI, which is a function of your height and weight. A normal BMI is between 19 and 24. A BMI between 25 and 29 is considered overweight, and if it's above 30, it's considered obese. When we're obese, we develop a cluster of signs and symptoms which include high blood pressure, diabetes, truncal obesity, and high cholesterol. Together, these are known as the metabolic syndrome or syndrome X, and all of them increase our risk for heart attack and stroke, the first and third leading cause of death in America. Make sure to stay tuned and learn more about obesity when we're joined by Dr. Amy Lee and Dr. Jeremy Corman. Hi everyone, welcome back to MDVOD, and today we're talking about obesity. And joining us here in the studio are two obesity experts, Dr. Amy Lee, board certified internist, and Dr. Jeremy Corman, LA Bariatrics Director, uh, weight loss surgeon. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Thank you. And um, my first question about obesity is for Dr. Lee. Um, how do we actually define obesity? Well, obesity is a chronic pathological condition uh, of abnormal and excessive body fat accumulation. Uh, the U.S. Preventive Service Task Force has basically made recommendations that we screen all of our adult patients with the use of the BMI or the body mass index. The body mass index is calculated by kilogram uh, divided by your height and meter, meter squared. And as a definition, uh, someone who has a BMI of 25 to 29.9 is considered to be overweight. Anyone with a BMI of over 30 is considered to be obese. And so the BMI itself is a good tool, but it's not the best tool. In my practice, we use something a little bit more sophisticated uh, called bowel impedance. It's basically a different way of measuring someone's body composition, which becomes more important when we want to come up with a regimen for uh, reasons of dieting. And I brought the prop with me today, which is something that I carry with me to everywhere I go, um, if it's in the comfort of my own purse, and basically it measures someone's percent fat, uh, lean weight in pounds, as well as fat weight in pounds. The best thing about this technology is that it also measures someone's resting metabolism and on how many calories they burn at rest as well as on activity. So knowing all that information, now we can actually customize a diet plan for that individual. Oh, that's outstanding information. So obesity is defined uh, by your body mass index and um, as Dr. Lee points out, sort of a more fancy way of measuring um, your body fat uh, is with an impedance test. Um, once someone is referred to you with obesity, they're defined as um, greater than 30, let's say a body mass index, where, how do you start treating them? What things do you start helping uh, people lose weight with? Well, usually it requires an initial conversation. My initial cons consultation can last up to 40 to 50 minutes because I need to really understand the background of this individual, why they do the things they do, why they eat the way they eat, 
and even their culture becomes very important, um, as well as their work, uh, workload, what they do throughout the day, um, and also they have time on the weekends to sort of incorporate the exercise and, and everything else. Uh, so it's very important to really sit down and educate, and majority of the education comes down to understanding what nutrition is all about. Mm -hmm. I actually sit down and teach them everything from what a calorie is to what's a good fat to a bad fat, and how to incorporate enough protein into your day mm -hmm. to actually cause efficiency in how you lose weight. And on top of that, exercise and physical activity becomes very important. Mm -hmm. It's almost, it goes hand in hand with nutrition. You can't do one or the other um, by itself. Mm -hmm. And so it comes down to peer education. Mm -hmm. And obviously education and, um, and recommendations is part of an adjunct to other uh, therapies as well, like surgical mm -hmm. intervention that Dr. Corman will talk about later on. Mm -hmm. So that's a great point. Um, Dr. Lee's talking about how it's very important to uh, really, in, in addition to learning about diet and exercise, to know about your metabolism, like how much are you actually taking in and how much are you uh, putting out? Because that's actually a pretty basic um, you know, idea, but it's important to take the history uh, to get the right diet and right exercise plan, which sounds like it needs to be individualized. Exactly. Um, you know, other than diet and exercise, there are new medications that have come out recently that are FDA approved. What are some of these medications and how, how briefly do they work? Um, it's very exciting. We're at this time where FDA has finally approved yet another medication. Uh, the recent one that was approved in June of 2012 is called Lorcasserin. Um, and recently, two weeks ago, they uh, approved another medication called uh, Kismaria, uh, which is another form of uh, combination of two old medications um, now being used for anti-obesity indications. Um, Lacaserin is actually a 5-HT2 2C specific agonist, which is similar to what we know as FEMFEN from back in the day. However, they uh, formulated and also they did enough safety studies on this one specific medication where it is safe uh, and is specifically targeting the uh, central nervous system mm -hmm. to uh, relieve uh, depress the appetite, which is the whole role of anti-obesity medication. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, um, it sounds like medications might be indicated uh, to treat obesity. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what the side effects are for some of these new medications? The common side effects for locasterin comes down to uh, headaches, um, some upper respiratory infection, and uh, for some people they can actually become depressed and have uh, suicide ideations. But these side effects are actually really minor, at least in the phase three trials that they uh, mm -hmm. underwent. So as of now, headaches and nausea vomiting, which is very common in most medication, so, part of the side effects. So sorry to interrupt. So in some cases, we'd recommend medication, uh, but again, the, the, the benefits have to outweigh any of those risks. Is exactly, that right? Okay. Exactly. And uh, these two new, two new medications have been proven to help people lose up to 5 to even 10 percent of um, a body, uh, body fat in a duration of time, wow. which that's what FDA looks for when wow. they approve a medication. So that's great information. Um, and in some cases, uh, you know, diet and exercise and even medications don't work and surgery might be an option. Today uh, we have uh, Dr. Jeremy Corman, director of LA Bariatrics. Dr. Corman, when is surgery uh, the right treatment for obesity? So to take all the tech speak out of it, if, if you're significantly overweight or obese as defined by what we heard before, and you have some medical conditions like diabetes or high blood pressure, I think you should think about surgery mm -hmm. to effectively lower your weight and improve the medical conditions that you're suffering from. Mm -hmm. Once you're in, the, in, in, a, in, let's say, a consultation, we can look at your body mass index, and it's really the body mass index that defines whether you're an appropriate candidate. Mm. And, and as discouraging as the statistics are, about overweight, obesity that you had mentioned earlier, one of every three adults, one of every six kids. I think there's a lot of encouraging news on, on surgery, how effective it is, and how it can reverse some of the medical conditions uh, that people suffer from. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and there are different uh, types of surgery available right. for obesity. What, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, there are three main types that are popular in this country, three that we offer in our practice. Uh, there's the lap band, there's gastric bypass, and there's the sleeve gastrectomy. There are other 
the other options, but these are the three that are by far the most common uh, and, and that we've worked out well. We've got excellent outcome results. Uh, and, and the way I like to look at these surgeries is you have the lap band, which has recently been very popular, and, it, and it's been appealing because of the low risk and not changing the anatomy of the stomach. On the other side of the spectrum, you have a gastric bypass, which we may consider the most aggressive and maybe more risky because of that, but then again, aggressive weight loss mm -hmm. and aggressive uh, way of dealing with some of these medical conditions we talked about. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere in between is the sleeve gastrectomy. Mm -hmm. It's closer to the gastric bypass and how aggressive it is, mm -hmm. but still less so. Mm -hmm. And it is somewhere in between in some of these weight loss uh, outcome studies. Mm -hmm. So those are the three. Mm -hmm. You brought an example of what a, a, a lap band actually looks like. Can you kind of sure. take us through the anatomy of this? Sure. Uh, the, one of the appealing things, and I'll demonstrate that now, one of the appealing things about the, the lap band is that it's reversible. You can take it off. Wow. Okay. So um, that's here's, here's that's a, a great take home uh, there, there message. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, it's, it's typically one of the most important things that, that people mention when they make their decision about surgery. Uh, we individualize, we try to individualize with the patients what is best for them based on mm -hmm. their, what, what they think that they can deal with. Um, but let's show you how it works. So this is a pretty good model of the stomach. This groove here mm -hmm. is where the band would sit, as you saw. Mm -hmm. This is the band with an inner inflatable cuff. You can feel that that's mm -hmm. soft mm -hmm. around the stomach and it's inflatable. Mm -hmm. And the, really the simple mechanism by the way it works is that when the band compresses this part of the stomach, which is a very sensitive part of the stomach, it has an effect on reducing appetite, reducing mm -hmm. hunger, mm -hmm. and restricting how much you can eat in a meal. Mm -hmm. and, and that's hence, very simply it. And hence weight loss. Um, Hopefully. By, okay. If they comply with behavioral coaching, as you mentioned, Amy, uh, nutrition yep. and exercise, you really don't get a free ride. And that's a great point because uh, as Dr. Lee brought up earlier, you can have a lap band and if you're taking in a bunch of calories, you might not be able to eat big, you know, chunky meals, but you can drink eight frappuccinos a day right. and that's the and same that calories in problem. Absolutely sabotage, right. absolutely sabotage a good operation. And you both brought up a great point. Um, you know, obesity, it's not just that you're overweight that causes a problem, it's that when we are overweight and in particular obese, we develop this syndrome. Uh, we develop diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. And Dr. Dr. Corman, um, there's been data that came out recently looking at um, whether surgery might in fact help diabetes in patients that are overweight. Right. Can you comment on that? Right. So, some really exciting uh, outcomes. Actually, in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is your journal and not a surgical journal. And uh, so it, it just gives more validity to the study, I feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these studies have shown that weight loss surgery, specifically the stapled operations, which is the gastric bypass and the sleeve gastrectomy, mm -hmm. that they're very highly effective mm -hmm. in weight loss outcomes and in reversing or diabetes. In, in the study, I think they called it remission of diabetes. Mm -hmm. They compared these studies I mean, these, these operations with managing patients medically. Mm -hmm. So surgery plus medical management, because you don't get away from behavioral nu and nutrition and, and, mm -hmm. and exercise coaching, mm -hmm. along with surgery comparing to patients just behavioral modification, and, and the outcomes were, were, were tremendous in, in favor of, of the surgery. So that's great information, uh, great take-home advice. Um, there's medical options for obesity. There's certainly diet and exercise uh, programs that can be individualized. Uh, and there's surgical therapies uh, available. Um, what's fascinating uh, to me and many uh, people in the healthcare profession is that obesity is not going away. In fact, it's tripled since 1980. Um, we're getting bigger, uh, literally, uh, as a nation. Um, what are, I'll ask Dr. Lee first, why do you think uh, we're at risk and, and is there anything in particular that puts uh, uh, us at risk as Americans for obesity? 
Well, the cause of obesity is multifactorial. Um, there are some things we can control, and but there are some things we, we absolutely have no control of, mm -hmm. such as our genetic predisposition, what we inherited from our ancestors or from our parents. Mm -hmm. There are babies who are grown with genetic mutations that starts gaining weight the moment they start breathing air. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas there are conditions where we acquire as adults, like hypothyroidism, where um, treatment is not weight loss, treatment is medications. Mm -hmm. So it's important for individuals to actually be um, on top of their own personal health care, take a little responsibility, go see your primary physician for a regular yearly checkup to figure out if some of the most common things that may contribute to weight gain is purely just a condition that you acquired. Um, I see a lot of patients on medication that causes weight gain. Medications for inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, um, or even on, an, on some kind of antidepressive medication that can cause you to overeat That's and retain water. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important to know all that. But the things that we could control is number one, the environment that we're in, mm -hmm. and two, the food that we eat, as well as the exercise that we put in. And so all these things play a role, so it's hard to say one thing uh, causing the other. That's a great point. So uh, just to kind of summarize, uh, you know, medications um, that you might not think of can cause you to gain weight. Certainly are genetics. It's important to know your family history. And some things are reversible like hypothyroidism. You need to get your thyroid checked, um, you know, when, you, when you're overweight. Um, and then our environment. Uh, if we're living next to many uh, fast food places, uh, it, it's easy to, on your way home to stop and uh, inhale uh, me mega calories. Um, and then, uh, Dr. Corman, uh, anything to add to that? I, I would say, um, you know, kids, uh, you know, one out of six and uh, one out of three kids ranging from two to 19 uh, now are, are, are overweight. Is there anything in addition that well, you would add to that? Well, it's frightening, and, and, and I've, seen, I've seen patients that uh, uh, under 18, 15, 16, already have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. There are kids that have what used to be called adult onset diabetes. They had to change the name to type 2 diabetes wow. because now adolescents are, are wow. getting these conditions. And the really frightening thing is they're pro people who, who crunch numbers are projecting that this generation mm -hmm. might live less long mm -hmm. than our current generation. That is, our life expectancy mm -hmm. may decrease mm -hmm. with what's happening with this current environment and the kids. Frightening. Wow. wow. It's another uh, startling uh, point, but uh, well taken. Um, we're growing as a nation. This is important stuff. I want to thank you so much, uh, Dr. Amy Lee and Dr. Jeremy Corman, uh, for discussing such a huge and important topic on obesity. And make sure to stay tuned because up next on Apple a Day, we'll learn ways to prevent obesity. Thanks so much. We're back with an apple a day and common sense tips to help minimize the risk of obesity. Just by making a few simple adjustments to your diet and lifestyle, you can lower your risk of being overweight. Gaining weight is a simple formula. You want more calories going out and less calories coming in. So here are some simple tips. First, eat five smaller meals per day because that'll help boost your metabolism. And make sure you drink water with meals because water has zero calories and will help make you feel full faster. Try to avoid high calorie drinks. The biggest offenders in America are soft drinks, sodas, and specialty coffee drinks, which include massive amounts of sugar. Also, try to stay away from excess of alcohol, salt, and other food additives. And maintain a healthy diet that includes a mix of whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and some protein. And in addition to following a healthy diet, Regular exercise will help boost your metabolism and keep you lean and fit. And if you're like most people and don't have time to go to the gym, park further from work, ride your bike, and take the stairs. The key is balance. And be sure to stay on top of the latest news about obesity research at cdc.gov because the more you know, the more successful you'll be with living with obesity or any condition. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you found this information about obesity helpful. I'm Dr. John Kennedy, and you're watching MD VOD, your health live and on demand here on empowerme.tv. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and share us with your friends and family. And for any episodes you might have missed, they're now available on empowerme.tv's website and the YouTube channel. 
and be sure to leave us your comments and questions so that we can better help you. We'll see you next time on MDVOD. For any episodes you might have missed, they're available at the EmpowerBee.tv website and the YouTube channel. And be sure to leave us any comments and questions so that we can better help you deal with your disease. We'll see you next time on MDVOD.